Blockchain.com. Invest like your icons with Blockchain.com, the National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. Buffalo Wild Wings. If it's game day, Buffalo Wild Wings is the place to be. All Tech Lansing. Just listen with All Tech Lansing. Perfecting sound since 1927. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now your hosts, Nate Newton and Bobby Belt. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome to Cowboys Crosstalk. We are live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. I'm Bobby Belt from 105 Through the Fan. I'm joined by my 105 Through the Fan teammate, Chris Arnold. Get Chris up. Arnold! The what three-time up? Hall of Famer. I Arnold! Be, uh, I, I should be yeah. clear there, three-time Hall of Famer. Uh, as always, we've got the three-time Super Bowl champion and six-time Pro Bowler and uh, hopefully future Nate NFL Nate, Hall Nate, of Famer, Nate, Nate, Nate Newton. Nate Newton. And our Cowboys legend this evening was a third-round pick by the Cowboys out of Boise State in 2012. He spent his entire nine-year career with the Cowboys, where he was a vital piece in the trenches of a defense that finished in the top ten of the NFL for four consecutive years. Welcome to a Cowboys fan favorite, Tyrone Crawford. TC! TC! Appreciate you joining us today. <laughs> yes, so it always brings energy, energy boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, so time just flies by. So your, your last season was 2020. Um, which was obviously a really unique year with, with COVID and everything else. But, um, you know, Travis Fredericks last year was the year before that in 2019. You see the news today. It's like he's going to be a, a first-time finalist or first-time eligible pick for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And so it just kind of shows you how quick everything goes by. Does it feel like it's been four years since, since you were last out on the football field? Uh, it does not. It does not. Yeah, time flies. Time, I mean, I've learned that with my little girls, that time flies. I mean, my, my oldest daughter is six now, and, I mean, it's just it's flown by. I don't even understand how it happened. But, yeah, I mean, that last year was kind of tough. It was, it was the COVID season, no fans. Um, a lot of bad things happened within the organization. We had a, our, our, our strength coach pass. Um, so, you know, that, that, that was kind of, uh, you know, that, that year really sticks in my memory. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, since then, you know, I don't, I don't know where the time's gone. We, we were talking about this last week with uh, Timmy Newsom, uh, and, and we were talking about the idea of, you know, when you've got – when you walk away from the game, when you make that decision, a lot of guys talk about the first couple years are really, really difficult, where it's like you've spent, you know, the last 20 years playing the sport competitively and kind of throwing all your energy into that. How long did it take for that, that fire, I guess, to, to tamp it down a little bit for you? Um, for me, you know, uh, going into the last couple games of uh, that 2020 season, I kind of knew – that um, you know, I, I was I was I was praying on it um, and whether I was going to retire or not. And uh, you know, that year I kind of got uh, my my prayers answered. Um, you know, what uh, what happened was I got a blood clot in my uh, mm. in my calf, and it moved up to my chest. And I was on um, those are those are two. I had two small pulmonary embolisms, wow. which is pretty scary. So um, you know, I, I ended up having to take blood thinners and uh, for a long time and with those you cannot play you cannot play football so um the answer was clear uh you know i was done and you know that kind of made it easier for me after my career along with i had no time i, I had two girls at that time mm -hmm. um you know it was just rolling we, we we just had things to do i stayed busy um and yeah i really didn't think too much about uh you know football when 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 it comes to raising girls i, I put a lot of passion into that as trying to be the best dad i can so um yeah i mean it wasn't it wasn't much for me Totally understand that. Yeah. But what I found interesting about you being retired, you still have some former teammates still playing. In fact, at one point, there's this Boise State con connection. It's like Cowboys keep drafting and, and signing Boise State guys. Who are some of the guys that you were playing with that are still on the team right now? Be, I, we already know about Tank. Yeah, so Tank, obviously, that's my boy. Yep, uh, yep, Boise State. Yep. Uh, but, you know, other brothers I got on the team still is Dak, Zeke, uh, Zach. Yep. Um, who else? I think that's it. That's about yeah. it now. Yeah. The, the uh, final bill's flying. Ain't yeah. that's <laughs> crazy. I didn't even really take it in until yeah. right now. That's yeah. crazy. CJ, Go CJ Goodwin. CJ Goodwin, still, my boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 sorry, and, Jordan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. J. Uh, Lou. By the way. J. Lou. J. Lou, yeah. That's yeah, J. Lou, that's right. Right. Yeah. I love him. Ball right. guy. Yeah. And by the way, CJ has not taken over Tyron Smith's locker. Yeah. He's got the one on the end of the row right okay. now. Okay, yeah. yeah, CJ's a beast, man. He is, oh, man. I, I also still play around. with CD. I, I play with, I play yeah, with CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the guys that I was with for a long time. Right. You know, yeah, those yeah. those three guys, four guys. 
you know, Ty, when we look at uh, you mentioned just there how, how intense that last season was for you with, uh, you know, the blood thinners and, and the difficult year with it being COVID. A lot of people would hear that and go like, man, that's got to be the most difficult thing he, he ever encountered in his career. And anybody who, who has watched some of the, the great documentaries that DallasCowboys.com did with you knew that you faced a lot of challenges. It was not an easy path to get up to the NFL. Um, just talk about some of those things that you overcame and, and, and those pivotal points along the way to your NFL career. I mean, yeah, just like any other NFL player, you know, a, a lot of us, we got adversities we've had to face. And, um, you know, during my career with the Cowboys, uh, I, I went through injuries. Um, it was it was tough for me to uh, stay healthy. I, I, I started it off with an Achilles tear um, year two um, with the Cowboys, and, I, and that was in training camp, so I missed every single game that season. And uh, going into year three, um, recovered well and, and had a great uh, third year uh, with the Cowboys. And then uh, fourth year, I, I tore my shoulder, um, mm-hmm. tore, tore it up, got some anchors in that after the season. Next year, tore the other shoulder, got some anchors in that after the season, and then went on to, uh, I think, play a healthy season, and then um, had, had hip issues, and went on to fix those and got some anchors within my labrums and my hips. So physical game, uh, man. Trying, to toss, game, trying yeah. to toss them guys like Nate around. Yeah, there to yeah, fix yeah. Line, it's a man's man. world down there. You know that, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Man, so uh, are these titanium? Are these regular steel? No, uh, these is these are just regular, and they okay. got some ropes ropes okay. holding them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's a, wow. Nate, that's something that you, when Ty just kind of runs through the list of injuries, I specifically remember the shoulder tail. That was not something yeah, that was, I remember that was, not something was, that bad, was too. Man. I don't believe that was public for most of the season yeah. that you had been dealing with it. And you were playing yeah. through it. Um, and, and that you were playing through it. And that was something that I remember Leighton Vander Esch had said that, you know, one of the frustrating things for him in his NFL career was like how little people understood what guys go through and, and, and the kind of injuries that they fight through. Nate, in your experience, was that something that you ever felt like the frustration of? Is like, man, people don't really know exactly how much we're laying things on the line each week. And, and the, you know, and the great thing about it, Bobby, is we don't care as players while we're playing. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't speak for this era of guys, mm-hmm. but when we, we, we just – has so much pressure that we put on ourselves as players to we're not thinking about it. Like probably Jim Meyer and, 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 and Brother Brown probably had to tell him, hey, man, you just can't play this game. Mm-hmm. We took you through the workouts. You're not, you're not yourself. But the player thinks, hey, man, just give me a needle. Give me a shot. Yeah, yeah you know, That's take. less it's and less pain. these days. Yeah, yeah. So, and so you don't really think about it. But now when you get out of football and, and people start attacking players, they like, oh, man. Yeah. You go to the doctor with a with a with a broken leg, just a reg- regular broken leg. He tell you you out three months. Well, he's gonna be out six weeks, mm-hmm. maybe eight with rehab. He can't afford to miss three months. That's the season. Yeah. So the acceleration of what they do things right. and how we have to perform. That's what I defend. When I see a guy with a bad shoulder or something, and he got to fight off a three hundred forty pound guy. You know what I'm saying? His stuff is out of joint. Yeah. That's ugly, man. Mm-hmm. You know, Ty, when we talk about injuries that people don't know about, um, stuff where it's like maybe you're banged up, you're a little hurt, um, you know, there's always the the armchair quarterback that will watch a play and go, well, they should have done this. And, and a lot of the time they have no idea what, you know, the, the assignment was or what the keys were or anything else on the play. How much do you feel like whenever you th- – there was those sort of criticisms. When you would play, how much did you feel like – Man, you guys maybe only see, what, 20% of, of, of the context of what goes into what you guys are doing on a daily basis. How much do you feel like fans had a good grasp on what you guys were trying to accomplish, whether it be assignment or injuries or preparation? Yeah, you know, um, I actually talked with some people about maybe giving fans a little bit more of a view into what we do because um, it is something that, uh, you know, a fan will jump on Twitter and maybe try and bash somebody, and, and, and you would think, the fan may think, oh, they're not going to see this anyways. But a lot of the time, you know, it somehow ends up in a player's face. And um, it ends up affecting, you know, them throughout the week, maybe with their family or, you know, uh, how, how they carry their self when they go home to their kids. And, um, you know, you don't think about that as a fan. You think you're just sending a simple tweet out or, you know, you're because you're frustrated over a Cowboys loss. And so you want to bash somebody else and, and bring them down. And, you know, that's always, that's always you know, something I've um, – I don't even want to use a bad word, but it's, it's, <laughs> some, it's something I defend really strongly now, um, you know, and uh, just like Nate, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating to me, uh, you know, to, to see that. But 
And, and I went through it. You know, when, when I was playing, uh, there were times where, you know, I had good games and everybody talks highly. And then you have the bad game and everybody talks, you know, bad. Just like kind of like the Cowboys last, last week. Yep. You, the tweets were insane. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this week they're going to play great and we're going to get a great, great response from Twitter. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean it's, just, it's just a constant defense. Um, but that's just kind of what it is. You know, we can't be too mad at, uh, you know, the people that um, – it's fans they they've, they've made this sport man. yeah i mean th that's why it's popular and um so i love fans you know and i love i love every side of it you know because i, I love it i love to hate it you know like i, I hate yeah. it right I, hate it. <laughs> I don't know how but to you guys that. are not yeah, robots i, I get it y'all are not a madden game y'all are real people so absolutely. it's like some things yes. kind of get through sometimes absolutely with that being said you got the ravens coming up it's gonna be a tough team they, they like to punish with their running game not gonna talk about the ravens right now but when you were playing what Offensive lineman or running back that you said, oh, hell, here we go again. Who, well, who was one of the toughest linemen you had to go up against or a running back that you said, no, I'm going to have to grab this guy real good because yeah. I'm going to bounce off of him? Well, um, I'll still say Trent is one of the, like. Trent when, Williams? When, yeah, when he was, oh, when he yeah. was going. Um, but, like, running back, mm -hmm. um, I got ran over by Adrian Peterson, like li literally All ran day. over. He AD, ran over my head. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah. Stop, yeah. <laughs> Stop. But, but the worst one, the yeah. worst one to try and run and hit, and yeah. I had a couple free hits sometimes, was Marshawn Lynch. Woo, beast like mode. He, yeah, yeah. He was always just trying to take Brad the Brad said that was like trying to tackle a bowling ball made out of razor blades. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. he's, 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 he's something else. And, and, and he, like he said, you know, he's trying to run through your face. Yes. And, you know, as I'm thinking, I'm coming off the block. Right. And I'm uh, just like, oh, damn, there's a running back. <laughs> exactly. You know, so, yeah. Um, it's all, was it was always fun, though. It was yeah. always fun. Yep. I just wrap up and just whatever. Hang on with your life. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. That's the way to do it. All right. Let's take our first break. When we come back, uh, we've got Tyron Crawford here tonight, a guy who was a captain yes. here in Dallas. Let's talk about leadership, culture, some of the things that he experienced, some of the things that he would help guide young players along with. Cowboys got a lot of really young players that are asked to step up, get some of Tyrone's thoughts on that. That's next here on the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk. Yes. I'll be
back, back to back, SWBC back. Mortgage's Dallas Cowboys Crosstalk. Yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. At SWBC, customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. We are live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco for the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk. I'm Bobby Belt from 105 Through the Fan. I got Chris Arnold from 105 Through the Fan. Got you down. The three-time Super Bowl champ, Nate Newton, is here. And our Cowboys legend this evening is former defensive lineman Tyrone Crawford. TC, TC. And, and, Ty, we were talking during the break a little bit about, um, you know, some of the things that you have going on, some of the, you know, things that you're trying to get started now in, in the post-NFL life that you're living now. What are some of the things that you're, you're doing? Is it just full-time dad status, or are you, are you getting some businesses going? What are, you, what are you looking at? Yeah, you know, a lot of it is obviously um, – Raising these girls. I got four girls. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's yeah, it's crazy. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, you, you're going to be like Will Smith and Martin Lawrence at the nah, door. Nah, nah. He's going to say, hey, what, what's the age what you range? Want? <laughs> I got I'm from six to seven months. Right oh, now. my yeah. gosh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, you, you got to run. It's yeah. wild. Man, it's you got to watch out for the yeah. bad little boys. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, trust me. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, on the business side of things, you know, I, I kind of foc- primarily focus on two things. Um, one, uh, me and my brother are scaling his business, and uh, we started a – a luxury outdoor space company called Crawford Signature Spaces, uh, where we kind of just take care of uh, you know people's backyards or or any kind of space that you want us to take care of on the exterior of the home. We do fencing, okay. turf, you know, yeah. everything, the whole nine yards, trees, landscaping, right. grass, everything. And then my second thing is um, just coaching young men. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I I go by a. A, the work brand that I've always have, and uh, I spell work with an extra K because you know I, I grew up with learning disabilities, and I always had to work extra hard just to kind of level out with uh, you know other mm-hmm. kids. So I took that with everything. I did extra hard work when it came to athletics, and um, you know that's just kind of how I live. So I, I I bring that mentality into coaching and um, and a couple other strategies I use uh, you know for coaching young men and women and in, in athletics. But um, I do a lot with D linemen and just kind of and focusing on getting extra work over what they do with their schools and themselves. You know, you mentioned uh, how you want to kind of like, you know, pour into the lives of, of, you know, kids who are coming up and and trying to to reach the goal that you got to. I remember there was a – I was at a youth camp in Duncanville about seven years ago with Charles Tapper, and and Tapp was talking about – I was just asking him, like, what are you doing out here today? Why is this important to you? And, and he got a little choked up, and he was like, I want to be to these guys what Rod Marinelli was to me. Like, I, I want to do that. How much did coaching, whether it be Rod Marinelli or anybody else along the way, how much did that coaching make an impact on you and, and drive you to say, hey, I want to do that for somebody else? Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was with a couple coaches uh, the other day, and, um, you know, I, I poured my heart out to him because uh, – that's where that's where my heart is, you know, in coaching and, and with the, with coaches that have coached me in my life. Um, there were huge impacts on my life. And, you know, I think that they're so important, so critical for, you know, young men and women, um, you know, across the nation and in Canada um, just to, you know, help them grow, help them, you know, you know, reach the levels that they want to reach, that they aspire to reach. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, um, Marinelli. Everybody knows how I feel about Marinelli. He's the master splinter. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I love that guy. I love all the coaches that have coached me in my life. Um, and, you know, I hope they know that. And, you know, that's why I want to do something. It's just like Tapper was talking about. I want to help coach young men, sure. women, and just help make, make sure that, you know, if there's a goal that they want to reach, you know, we figure out a way for them to reach it. And uh, we put in that extra work to reach it. So, do you, you know, I'm from Canada. How much do you get back and, and do do things back in Canada? How much? Yeah, for for when when I was in my uh, like early onset in my career, um, we did a we did a football camp in Canada, um, and, and it was primarily to tackle bullying because me, my cousin, my brother, the right. people that we um, that were running the camp were affected by bullying in our mm-hmm. lives, or we or you know we even done some bullying, mm-hmm. and we know what it can do and its effects. So you know um, we, we we still try and carry that. Um, you know, throughout our city and throughout our country um, and just in coach young men and women up in that aspect. Um, yeah. The football side of it, I haven't been back to do much of it, right. um, but I plan to. I plan to. Once I get this uh, work brand off the ground, um, I plan to get over there and, and really make an impact um, along with, you know, here and in, in, in our local community here in Dallas as well. So you talk about all these good things, and this shows why when you were playing with the Cowboys, they made you one of the captains. 
Were you honored about that? And is it such a is it a natural leadership thing that you have, or something that you work on? Because a lot of guys gravitate towards you to find out what I need to be, what I need to do, and help be responsible. Yeah, I mean, well, for me, obviously, you know, I think I think leadership is learned, um, and uh, my mom is, is is a great leader and and a great mentor for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, along with other people in my life, but you know, my mom is the the first person that comes to mind of you know. I guess why I believe I was the leader that I was. Um, you know, she, she, she led uh, by example mostly. Mm -hmm. um, she never took a day off of work, um, and she, you know, raised me and my brother and didn't, didn't complain. I never heard her complain, at least you know, in front of me. And she might have done it, you know, with her friends, yeah. but she never did it in front of me. Um, and she's just one of the, the hardest working people. I've, she worked in a factory her whole mm -hmm. life, you know, in Detroit and Windsor. Those are factory cities, mm -hmm. and to be able to do that and you know, not complain and do it day in day out. Um, is insane and yes I was extremely honored uh, to be um, a captain of the Dallas Cowboys and it's voted on you know by your teammates so that meant that much more to me um, and so um, yeah I mean uh, and also Marinelli would always have me reading books and right. um, my like everybody around me would you know encourage me to you know be the leader that they knew I could be coach Garrett and all mm -hmm. those guys so um, yeah, I, I love those guys for that, and it's helped me here in business. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the, the same approach that I take in business. And, you know, we just take it with the Canadian yeah. gentleness and kindness, but yeah. also. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know, Windsor, his hometown, is across the river from Detroit. So they're yeah. right next to each other. Yeah. People go back right. and forth. They go to those casinos in Windsor. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that. You know, I, I don't understand that. My teammates love me just as much as your teammates love you. Nobody voted me to be yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I guess I lack some leadership. <laughs> yeah. This, this is yeah. actually uh, a, a question that I think I'm really interested for both of y'all's perspectives on. So we hear a lot, um, you know, analysis after games, whether it's their success or their struggles, you hear a lot about, you know, leadership and and who is responsible for getting guys prepared to play or who's responsible for motivation or whatever else what in, in y'all's experience as players how much of a culture a team culture do you think needs to be coach leadership versus player leadership and, and players taking that onus just on their own and having the freedom to to lead yeah you know i i believe coaches can only do so much you know like uh the guys in the locker room have to you know, hold other guys in the locker room accountable. And I don't think it just needs to be the captains or the leadership council or the leadership group. I think it needs to be everybody. You know, if the young if the young guy needs to step up and say something because it's on his heart, I think he needs to say it. You know, a lot of guys come with heart where, you know, a lot of guys don't. Um, and, you know, like Jay Lou, if he wants to say something, I know that man's heart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know that man has heart to yes. the dog's heart. You yeah, know what I'm right. saying? I know DeMarcus has the dog's heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I know those guys on that defense have the dog's heart, and I know they're saying that right now. I know they said that after that film, you know, on, on Sunday. Oh, I know they said yeah. that. And I know this week is going to be different for them boys because I know their heart. You know, I know their heart on the defense. And um, so I'm excited to see them, and I'm excited to see that offense go too because I know Dak's heart and I know Zach's heart. You know, I know those boys are dogs, and they're not about to just let people run over them like that. So I'm mm -hmm. excited. Nate, yeah. what was, it, was your I, experience? I'm, I'm echoing that because – if you, if you had something to say on our team, as long as you came with the right mentality in, in the right way, and see, Michael Irvin stands out. Troy rarely said anything, so when he spoke, everybody listened. Charles Haley, all that foolishness that y'all see, when it came time to ball, we didn't see that. Mm -hmm. It was all about the ball game. You know, Tony Tolbert, uh, Darren Woodson, we had dogs all over the joint. Absolutely. And so when they spoke up, and then, and, you know, and then Eric William. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it was a different world. Big nasty. Yeah, yeah. Pure so, legends. Yes. So, yeah, they, when they spoke up, man, <laughs> like, wait a it minute. was nice. Uh oh yeah. here we go. It was nice. It's on. Because much probably like he was, if he's talking to you, he's looking you in the eye. He ain't looking all around and waving mm -hmm. his hands. He's looking you in your eye, trying to get you to connect with what this team is about. And so that – that's that's one of the things I noticed. He when he talked to you, he gonna look you in your eyes. So you gotta connect. You know, if you look down, he may say, "Oh man, I, this dude." <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He don't want he what I'm it. talking yeah, about. He can't yeah. handle this. He can't handle this. Yeah. You know, it's a, there. There's a thought with what goes along here in Dallas um, for both you guys who have played here. There's a, a, a little bit of a. I think people talk about like, well, you got to block out the noise. Like block out the noise is a common phrase that that you hear across the NFL talking about their buildings. I, you know, we talk to play, players in the locker, and, you know, sometimes they'll say away from the camera, they'll be like, 
you know, blocking out the noise is a, a nice thing to say, but the reality is you, you're going to hear it here. You will hear it here. And that instead you've got to have the tools and, and the know-how on how do you handle that noise and how do you put the right context behind that. How did you handle that? How would you encourage players, if you were on this team, and you know, there's a lot of young rookies on this Cowboys team right now, if you were in that locker room, how would you talk to them about handling the noise after a game like that and saying, like, hey, I know you hear it, but here's how you need to put it in the right context? You know, um, that's hard. But, you know, I think, I think if you forget fast, what you're saying, you know, is true. If you forget fast, the, the week is better. And you go in, and you go you into, let it go. Yeah, you you let it go, and, and you go into the next week swinging. Yeah. Um, you know, I I, I don't really I, I can't really come up with a with a message uh, on, on that because I know it's hard. And I know it's hard. Like that's all you're thinking about Sunday night is oh damn, film tomorrow is going to be insane. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not ready for that play I messed up here and that play I messed up there and the ball that went over my head here. Um, but. Uh, you know, those are those are just things you got to let go, and and you know, I think that's a, that's a learned skill in the NFL um, because it's inevitable for every single player. You're always gonna, you're going to have those games. You're not going to have great games every game, and if you do, kudos. You know, I I don't know any of those guys, but um, yeah, I mean, so I think it's a learned skill. I think it's something that you know um, you could talk about, but it may not help. You know, I I, I prided myself as somebody that. Um, you know, talk to everybody in the locker room. I, there wasn't one person I didn't talk to. Um, and, you know, for me, yeah, looking them in the eye and, and telling them everything, I was hoping they were hearing it, but maybe yeah. they didn't. You know, maybe it's just something they got to learn on, on their own. Um, and, and a lot of the times that, that probably was the case, you know. So that, I, think, I think that's kind of what it is as far as letting things go. Eric Kendrick said uh, after the game, that, uh, what's that? Nah. This is why these kids can't get past it. This this thing I'm holding in my hand. Oh, oh. cell phone. I, I, this I, I, is why. I, I yeah, sure social that, media. I, I because you your lovely wife. I was like, social hey, media. She's encouraging. Social me. media <laughs> yeah. is is dominant. Yep. And so you you gonna hear the noise mm-hmm. if you have an ex, if you got an ex, or you got a Facebook, or you got an Instagram, Instagram or you got a TikTok. Yep. It, you're not. I, I'm 62. I got all four of those things. Uh-huh. You're gonna hear the noise. Yep. yep. But like you said, when. What is worse than that is watching the film in front of your peers. Right, your teammates. That is what is worse. What are they thinking right. about you? Yeah. Can you get up off your rear and go out and perform yeah. better within the scheme to help the team win? This right here, I, I've heard guys say things about one another, but they blow it off way quick. We thought it was going to be something against Parsons in the DB. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, they, yeah, them yeah. guys blew that thing off, man. Micah, yeah. yeah, they blew that thing off Out like of it wasn't nothing. Yeah, that's a yeah. So I, the, the kids know how to handle media. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they know how to handle it. Yep. You know, Eric Kendricks talked after the game. Somebody had said, like, is, is this a game you just kind of put behind you and you forget about? And he said, no. He, he's like, you need to feel this for about 24 hours. You need to sit in it and remember how bad this feels. For you guys, when you had a bad performance or, or like, as a team and you guys would look back at things, how much do you say, hey, you need to sit in it, you need to feel this a little bit, versus you don't need to let it distract you and beat you down? Like, what, what is that balance like of trying to learn from it and have the proper respect for how poorly things went while also not letting it dominate your thoughts and, and you know, kill your demeanor, essentially? We did it on Mondays. We came in Monday. We watched the film. We listened to the, I call you know, the criticism because I ain't no, you know, Constructive. I don't know about constructive, but the <laughs> criticism, and we and I started correcting it right then in my mind, and we went out and we ran, we did what we had to do to get you know get loose, world tub, whatever, and then we went home and then Tuesday we was off, you try to be with your family, then Wednesday you start working on it and you just continue to build, like you say you gotta, you, and, and that's where your leaders come in. Your leaders gonna show not only verbally but through their work. Hey, this, hey this, that's behind me. I got to get ready for this team because, believe it or not, these two teams like to run the ball, but they do it in totally different ways. Yeah. So if you're thinking about Saints. how the Saints ran the ball, yeah. they ain't they, they getting outside. Almost, right. So they play. This team, he going straight right at Right up you. the middle. Yeah. So you, Ravens you up the be, middle. You got to focus. Each week is a, is a monumental thing. Yeah, and Derek Carr's not going to run for 85 yards on you like uh, Lamar Jackson uh, yeah. might today yeah. uh, or, or this weekend. Let, let's circle back. Let's take a look back at what went wrong in the Saints game a little bit, stuff they can learn from, and then look ahead to the, uh, the Cowboys and Ravens after that. But that is next here on the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk. Woo-hoo.
Back, back to back. SWBC back. Mortgage's Dallas Cowboys Crosstalk. Yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. At SWBC, customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. We are live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco for the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk. We've got Chris Arnold, Nate Newton, and our Cowboys guest tonight is Tyrone Crawford. And, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, we've delayed it for as long as we can. Talking about a, a really ugly football game that, that took place on Sunday. Cowboys lose 44-19 to to the Saints. And it was one where... I think everybody kind of had a healthy respect for New Orleans is they, they put out a really good performance against Carolina. No matter how many struggles you think Carolina has, New Orleans put a really good performance out there. So I, I don't think it was overlooked or anything else, but still, I mean, for them to come in here and, and have a lot of the success that they did, you know, throwing the ball, the, the, the stuff they had in the run game, uh, the stuff Clint Kubiak did, it looked like to try and work around Micah Parsons' impact. Um, just a, just a really frustrating performance all the way around that a lot of the guys are talking about. Ty, what did you see uh, in, in this particular game? And and as a former player for both of you guys, when you watch that, do, do you watch it as players almost? Like when you're watching a game back live, do you have that player mentality of like, oh, man, that blew that assignment, or oh, man, you can't be doing that? Or, or do you just kind of sit back and, and watch it on a more fan level these days? Yeah, there's no sitting back for me. <laughs> I, I have a problem, and, you know, I like to be I like to be alone. Like camaraderie sure. in other football games are cool, but like mean. with the Cowboys, I like to be alone. You want to focus? And yeah, and it's and it's a problem because I don't take my eyes off the D line on defense. You know, and even when the ball's gone, I'm like, okay, you know, I kind of just like zone out. Like I, I couldn't even tell you like what happened on on a you know a broken play or something yeah. because I'm like I was done after I watched the D lines assignments, and it's it's a fault. You know, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I wish I could watch <laughs> the game normal, but um, you know, that's just kind of how it is for me. But I, I do. You know, I enjoy it. I don't. I don't even know where the question went. I, I, I started to get. You <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. Just, just your thoughts, of, yeah. Of, like, like overall what thoughts of, of what happened in this game. What did What did you see out there? You know, um, and I know you say like it, it might not have been an overlooked thing, but uh, you know, I, I think there was a little bit of that. Uh, a little bit of you know the Saints. You know, might be the Saints from last year, um, but you know, I think I think uh, what's his name, Kamara. Kamara yeah, yeah. yeah. Ak. That, that dude right, was Kamara. running the rock, and um, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, He's back for sure. Yep. yep. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think it was a little bit unexpected, um, you know. But you know, again, you can't put everything on the defense. Uh, you can't put everything on the offense. You can't put everything on the quarterback. So uh, as a team, um, they just need to, you know, lock in, focus in that this is how teams are coming. You know, this is this is what, what this is what teams are doing to us now. And um, you know, like again, I already know it's going to be handled with the guys with heart in that locker room. Um, you know, they're not going to go into games like this no more. So. You know, uh, yeah. yes, I'm agreeing with you 100%. Uh, you just don't want that. And, it, and it's been a reoccurring theme over the years where teams of equal talent are better come in and they, they just dogmatic about that run. Uh, they've tried to address it. Uh, now, it, it, now the coaches have said the right things and the players have right, said the right thing. Now we'll see. From this point on, it's about, it's about being that dog, having that heart, getting your fits, knowing what your assignment is, and don't shy away from it. Don't – well, I thought I – no, don't shy away from it. Grab grass if you have to. Grab grab turf, well, you know, if you have <laughs> to. Yeah. yeah, I'm serious because yeah. mm -hmm. we have playmakers do. in that secondary. Yep. You know, but if there are worries, safeties – if their worries is coming up, stopping the run, and we don't mind putting our corners on a on an island, but not all the time. Yeah. Sometimes they, if you put, if if we got a cover two, and they and they pressing these receivers out, so these so these uh, safeties can be back there. Sometimes they can jump things. Mm -hmm. Jump the you route. Know, they can jump routes, take uh, mm -hmm. educated guesses. But when they when it's all about the run. You know, and then they pop you with a big pass like they did down the middle. It, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. So you need to get this team. And I'm going to tell you how it can be done. Because all playoff teams that play this Ravens team, they prefer this guy throwing. Soft rush. Don't get ahead of him. Don't try to run up at a gap and get by. Because if you see a hole, he's gone. Soft umbrella rush. Have 
one of your fast linebackers. Some people say Overshone. I don't care who it is. It could be uh, number 11. But have somebody back and tell them don't take a step up. Right. Let that soft rush keep him in there. But if you happen to break, you want to be back off the ball. Because if you fall into that rush a, a yard or two, you already lost contain. Yeah. He's so gone. you got to stay back. You got to force him to. I, I, Ain't no running. You got to force this kid to beat you past. I like it, Coach Nate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah. Back to those Saints, because people have underestimated them, and they're finally realizing, wait a minute, this team's got something. Kamara's back to 2022. Mm-hmm. Kamara, you realize this Saints starting lineup has yet to punt in two games. They mm. have not punted. You know, they went six straight times down the field on the Cowboys. They did all up and down against Carolina. When the bench came in in the fourth quarter, that's when they finally started punting. So the Saints are legit until proven otherwise. But what is also legit is this formula, because, you know, all these coordinators, this is what all the defensive guys and some of the offensive guys were saying in the locker room after the game. Me and Bobby were in the locker room after the game. They were saying, yeah, we got to address this tape because it's going to be out there and other teams' coordinators are going to use that against us because that's the blueprint now. Until Mm -hmm. proven otherwise, You run on the Cowboys. The Cowboys are looking for the pass because it's a pass-happy league nowadays, right? Yeah. If you run on them, make them stop you on the run. And like you said, watch out. If you're not back there, they're going to It's hard to sit. And and for the Cowboys' offense, they really have to play complementary run-pass offense. You can't just say Dak and and CD. The reason why is because they're going to take away CD. So until, to me, the missing piece on the offense is a – feature back you got a, a running back room Zeke and Cook uh, they're in their prime they were great I think they're situational at this age of their career and the other guys I don't think they're considered feature backs they're not f- fear there's no fear from defensive coordinators when you hand it off to anybody else and in, until they have a feature back they're gonna say well you know we're gonna take Dak and CD out of this you might get Ferguson some underneath stuff but that offense will not be able to score touchdowns. You got your field goal kicker until you get a legitimate feature back. Somebody's going to get 18 carries. The, 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 the problem is, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm going to maintain this, let's wait three or four more games to see if our offensive line jail. Yep. You know, we, 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 we keep jumping the gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you did, if you expected these Cowboys, I, I expected after about six or seven games, what I was hoping for was uh, if it's six games, three and three. If it's four games, two and two. This is what I'm hoping because you want to ignore we have a third-round pick center, yep. and you want to ignore even though he's a first-round pick, left our tackle. left tackle. Those are two of the most key positions on the O-line. Uh-huh. They didn't play well, fellas. Nope. So – uh, and Terrence still didn't either. It, it, the thing that we have to do is let this offensive line jail. This could be an ugly season. Oh, let can me, you put up I, with I'm it? I'm going to tack on something with this because this is what the dilemma was this last game. The reason you kept seeing all the different running backs coming in and out is because the offensive line hasn't jailed yet, and they couldn't, they couldn't expect those other running backs to pass protect the way Zeke could. You follow what I'm going? Oh, yeah. So when, even though they were trying to pass because the offensive line isn't settled in yet, they had to have somebody back there that could protect Dak, and that was Zeke. And he wasn't being used. First of all, he's, like I said, at his point of his career, he's not a feature back. He's not going to get all the carries. But you can't let Dak sit back there if the offensive line is in jail, just like what you were saying. Yeah. Nate, I, I want to ask Nate you, this, you're, you the question from the perspective of the guy who has to be on the offensive line. And, Ty, I'd like you to weigh in on the perspective of a defensive lineman who's trying to take advantage of this potentially. When you've got – two guys, two young players like that, two rookies on a, a unit that is so reliant on cohesion like the offensive line is. Um, how much is is communication on things like just the different games and stunts and twists and stuff like that, how much is that communication going to be the vital part of this? And maybe where you're going to see some of that leakage where it's like that that gel is not completely there yet. And how much – so uh, It's talk everything. About, when, when You know – when, when you played and y'all had Tyron and all of those guys, I literally see them walk up to the line <laughs> and not say a word. After about three years mm-hmm. with Tyron and all of those guys and Zach and uh, Rip, the Zach center, Martin, uh, they'll walk Travis up there Frederick. and would not say a word. Because they know. They knew what each other's was. But now. But Travis is a goat, man. Yeah, 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 yeah he, he is, was, man. He's calling I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. And, and so I, I was used to watch. I would be amazed because yeah. they would do that. But now. It's like, you know what, if you have to say, hey, 
Guyton, that's your guy. Look out. Hey, if this guy hit the A gap soon, you got to come down. But if he's ding, just ding, coming ding, from ding, back, ding. if he's coming from <laughs> back there, you like still got to drop out. You got to yeah. tell him now. Yeah. I tell DeMarcus yeah. as soon as we see all that, I'm like, DeMarcus, hmm? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we're getting this one. Yeah, you yeah. got to you got to communicate. You got you can't be shy about talking because every one of our offensive linemen this game had two or three bad plays, you know, individually. Yeah. Yeah. So you got, to, you got to be talking. You have to be. And this Ravens team has that ability with their front four to give you problems at different times. They are good as a unit, and they're good individually. Ty, what did you feel like whenever you knew you had a, a young and experienced player across from you guys on the offensive line? What did you feel like were areas you could usually exploit with young players? Was it, was it like, you know, oh, their hand usage coming into the league isn't usually great? Or is it, hey, they're not going to recognize some of these things that we're trying to disguise or some of these games we're trying to play? Yeah, I mean, games are always critical. Um, but, you know, at that point, we call them the fish. I'm right. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, like, like, like game one, you know, their, their, two, their two tackles were out. Both ends knew they had fishes, right? Yeah. So they're, 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 they're going their wide eyes, and they're going to know that, you know, we're, we're throwing our best. Sometimes you give your better game when you know it's somebody that you're just going to take complete advantage of, right? right. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, that, that, that being said, you know, that has to be the mindset with, with every player. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as, as far as, uh, you know, taking advantage of certain things, I mean, there's just – the, uh, uh, many many things that you you're you're thinking about when when that's the case um you know you 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 set it up all week you're not just thinking about it on game day um you guys have talked about that all week you got the the film guys coming in and telling you the scouts and then your coaches and everybody's just harping on it so uh those are things that you prepare for and you go and attack them with all you know all week when we come back, uh, let's put a bow on the Saints game a little bit. Look ahead to the Ravens preview that one. Uh, that's next on the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk.
back, back to back, SWBC back. Mortgage's Dallas Cowboys Crosstalk. Yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. At SWBC, customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. Last segment here for the Cowboy at the Cowboys Club in the Star in Frisco for the SWBC Cowboys Crosstalk. Bobby Belt from 105 Fan, joined by Chris Arnold from 105 Fan, Nate Newton, and our guest tonight is Tyrone Crawford. Uh, so, so before uh, I, we, we ask one more question here about the Saints game, uh, I, I got to notice that when I saw you walking around, you were wearing a Cowboys jersey. Yes, I was like, oh, did he come in here uh, wearing, wearing the 98? And I see 97. And I thought, oh, is that Oso Did he do it? No, it's nope, not. No, it no. is uh, Jason Hatcher. Hatcher. Yeah, big, big, big Hatcher bro. fan, Hatcher are you? in the middle. <laughs> big bro, man. I mean, those guys, my big bros, man, I, like, I look up to him so much. You know, Jason Hatcher, obviously, we still golf together. And, you know, I love that man. Um, he's meant so much to me in my life. But, um, you know, also like Kenyon Coleman, you know, uh, Jay Ratliff, you know, all those guys, Anthony Spencer, Marcus Spears, man, they, they, they did so much for me early mm -hmm. on in my career. Um, and the impact that they had just, you know, in those couple years uh, was great. So I always try and represent. I have about 15 jerseys and all just my boys and just people that, you know, mean a lot to me. Um, yeah, so I'll pop out with a DeMarcus jersey, a Prescott jersey, a Martin jersey, <laughs> all that. It's all coming out. That's awesome. So, I, well, before we look at the Ravens game, we'll ask one y'all one more question, and, and for both of y'all, uh, Nate and Ty, on this. And, and it's maybe the, the a little bit of the uncomfortable question. So Mike McCarthy is – in the last year of his deal. Um, there, there's, that, that's been discussed a ton this offseason. And, you know, Ty, you played in the season in 2019 um, where everybody had an awareness. Jason Garrett was in the last year of his deal. Nate, I know you played in the, uh, on a team in 1997 where you all knew Barry Switzer's job was on the line. How difficult is it? And, and do you guys feel that weight as players? Like, do you feel the magnification of big losses like the one on Sunday knowing, hey, somebody's job is on the line here? Yeah, I mean, maybe not necessarily um, feel it like on the players, um, you know, but we do feel for the coaches and, and we notice it, you know, um, say we have a big loss, uh, you know, the facility, there's the energy, you know, everyone yeah. feels the energy and, you know, in meetings, everybody feels the energy. Coaches are a little bit more intense, um, even when it's only game two, you know, uh, as it gets later in the season and, and things might be still rocky, uh, a little shaky later in the season, then yeah, you know, it gets even worse, but um you know, uh, obviously you don't want to see, you know, the coaches that you've grown to love um, get fired or, you know, anything anything happen to them in that sense. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's the nature of the business, and, and that's something you learn, especially when you're young and you go through some coaching changes. I didn't have to go through that, you know, obviously. Right. Um, I went through some position coaching changes and coordinators and stuff like that, but Coach Garrett was my coach all the way for eight years, you know, and then my ninth year I had McCarthy. Um, but, yeah, I mean – I, it's, I know it's stressful on them, um, not necessarily as stressful on players that know they're secure, but it's stressful to the point that you don't want to see, you know, a coach lose their job. You don't want to see anybody, you know, lose their job in the NFL. You know, I, I feel bad for Coach McCarthy because I think, it's what I personally think, is when we, we got rid of Coach Switzer, he was there short term anyway. Yeah. He was there. Regard, yeah. To hold it down. Yeah, three years, yep. four years maybe. Coach was there. But my thing is, you 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 want to blame Coach Swisser with a bunch of old guys? We were through. My team, my last few years, we were through. We were just falling ducks every year. Mm -hmm. Two or three of us would get cut, released, right. traded. We were through. Uh, I feel right now with all these young guys that Coach has, you know, mixed with older, older guys. It yeah. ain't no in-between guys. Yeah. Ain't a lot of them. Yeah. In-between guys, so – Coach McCarthy has done a hell of a job. And if this thing fall off the wheels, I would ask Mr. Jones, please look hard before you let the fans, and I know they will. They don't let the fans dictate what they do, and thank God for that. But this guy has given you, you know, season after season of winning. Now, I know everybody keeps talking about the Super Bowl. I agree. But I ask people like this right here. Y'all keep talking about Super Bowl. It's a stair step for some teams. And you have to get to the NFC Championship game. This thing ain't just – you just don't walk into this league and win. This guy has a, a blueprint along with Will McClay how to do this thing. Coach, uh, Coach McCarthy. I know one man, Dak, going to be sorry he's gone because mm -hmm. they got a click there. They, so, you know, you, you can throw away guys or you can, you know, get rid of guys, but you better be careful that you, you know, ask Philadelphia about Andy Reid. 
Right. Yeah. 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 Maximum about that. <laughs> last uh, that's three. A good analogy. Yeah. Last three minutes here. I uh, just want to kind of go down the the road. Chris, Nate, and, and Ty will finish up the. Big game against Baltimore, obviously. A, a lot on line for both these teams. Baltimore's 0-2. They've got a really difficult schedule coming up even after Dallas. Uh, what do you want to see from the Cowboys this week? Response, some of your expectations for this game. They've got to respond because Baltimore is notorious to be in a physical team. Everybody knows their defense is always physical. Side Yusuf from The Athletic, I was talking about him with him today in the locker room. He found a stat that the Ravens has led the NFL in rushing, the team, not individual players, as a team. Every year since the early 2000s. It's like, wait a minute. Not just the back here and there and every other. Every year, overall, that team is the leading rushing team in the NFL. So, in other words, they know what to do with that ball. And I'm looking in particular with Derrick Henry because Derrick Henry had moved to Dallas, said he would have loved to play for the Cowboys, but nobody even called. And I'm like, he's going to be motivated. So, it's going to be a big, big test. And I'm not going to say the whole season rides on this, but it's going to be uncomfortable if the Cowboys wind up one and two and the Ravens wind up one and two. Nate, what you got? Hey, I just think it's right here, the soft umbrella, make this kid throw to beat you and run just enough to keep him honest. You ain't got to run the whole game, but run just enough to keep him honest on certain parts of the field. I think we should be okay. Ty, yeah. what are you looking for? Yeah, I want to see Hart. You know, I want to see Hart out of the go. whole team, you know, especially the defense and the defensive line. I know DeMarcus is going to get them boys rowdy. Um, but I definitely want to see, uh, you know, if it gets physical, get physical back. You know, I don't even care if you have to punch somebody in the chin. You know, get, <laughs> yep. get rowdy yep, up yep. there and uh, get that defense hype. And I, I think, you know, with DeMarcus and that leadership there on the defense, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You know, real quick here as we're wrapping up, you mentioned the toughness and the physicality and stuff like that. We always hear defense talk about, like, hey, you want to be physical. You, you want to impose your will. You don't want to feel that. Did you feel like in terms of what you saw over your, NF, over your NFL career was toughness and physicality? Was that something that you could – you saw guys get coached out of them, or did you feel like that had to be an innate trait within somebody that you just acquire that trait when you get that player? A lot of it had to be in the nature. A lot of it had to be in the nature for sure. I, you know, I saw guys where coaches tried to, you know, dig and dig and dig to get the dog out of them, to get the heart – pull the heart you know the heart of the player out yeah. and uh, it just never came mm -hmm. you know so um I, I think it has to be in, you know instilled you know growing up and you know uh, through adversity and um sure. you know trials and tribulations in your life and um you know I, I think that's what that's what makes a lot of great defensive players at least for sure where can the uh the people keep up with you on uh social media or the other things you got going on in your life now yeah man i'm all over social media uh t crawford 98 uh for both x and uh and Instagram, IG. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blow up the social media trade. Uh, I'm into these businesses, and I think social media is a walking billboard. So I'm just gonna kind of just keep doing my social media thing, and um, and you know, uh, hopefully it just it, it bounces into the business and, and rotates, you know, throughout my life for sure. Y'all make sure to follow uh, Ty on social media. Thank you to Tyrone Crawford, to my Nate man, Newton, my man, my and man, to Chris man, Arnold for all the guys here. <laughs> I'm Bobby Bell. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you guys again next week. Awesome. Thank you, guys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!